Hi everyone, it's Jack Bauer with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Bank of America, one of Warren Buffett's largest holdings, absolutely fantastic business. Second largest market cap bank in America behind JP Morgan Chase. This Silicon Valley bank crisis caused steep declines in this business in March this year, reaching its 52 year low, just $26. It's now rebounded a bit to just shy of 29, still down 13% year to date, down 22% in the last 52 weeks. Right now it's trading for a P-E ratio under 9 under its historical averages, dividend yield of 3% with a 26% payout ratio. Buffett has held on to his shares, can't really add any more because of re regulatory limits on owning a significant amount of banks. I think this is definitely a case of the baby being washed out with the bathwater. I think the most recent quarter proves it, so I'm going to talk about that, talk about what I think of this business, what I think about his valuation right now, whether I think this is a buy, sell or a hold going forward. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos and want to see more. Let's get into it. As the most recent filing, Buffett's second largest position continues to be Bank of America at 11.19% of his portfolio with over a billion shares for a total value of $33.45 billion, significant percentage of the business. If he owns any more really, then it becomes a regulatory issue to the point where he may, like, he may be compelled to buy the entire bank, which is not something Buffett wants to do. That's not really how he operates with these type of things. Banks are complicated businesses to run, complicated from a regulatory standpoint, 100% for an outside investor. So he's not going to want to do that. But he has held on to this company for a very long time. He had a lot of faith in Brian Moynihan, and as he should, he's an excellent owner operator. And this continued faith from not only the most infamous investor of all time, or you could argue the toss on that, but definitely the most famous investor in finance and banks for sure. This is a great vote of confidence in this business, especially when he has been selling Bank of New York Mellon and things like that. Smaller mid-sized banks, he continues to hold on to this big bank. And the most recent results, in spite of a so-called banking crisis, show that this is an extremely conservatively and well-run bank. Total revenue increased year over year of 13% to now $26.3 billion net of interest expense for the quarter. Net income increased 15% year over year to $8.2 billion. That gave a diluted earnings per share of $0.94 cents for the quarter. 18% increase. Very, very good in my opinion slightly decreasing the number of shares outstanding which is obviously something we want to see but not particularly moving the needle but overall just really strong quote from this business on the surface i want to get a bit deeper into how well this business is operating they had 130,000 new consumer bank and checking accounts that's the 17th quarter of consecutive growth they had 1.3 million credit card accounts which is really impressive for a predominantly u.s based business Record 3.6 million consumer investment accounts with $37 billion of net client inflows since last year. That's impressive in itself because it's not a particularly good time to invest in the stock market for many people, or new investors certainly have been much turned off. They grew digital sales by 4% year over year to 1.8 million. Digital sales now represent 51% of total sales. Really strong pivot. Banking was far behind, and many upstart banks managed to grab a lot of market share, but Bank of America is clawing that back for sure. They're now number three in investment banking fees, which obviously is nowhere near where it was a couple of years ago in the, the boom times for investment banking. Basically, no IPOs happening. Merging and acquisitions are all they're really getting money from, and they're not happening that often. In global markets, they grew sales and trading revenue to $5.1 billion. That's the second highest quarterly sales and trading revenue in a decade. They're doing re really well here, in my opinion. Arguably, the story of the quarter for banks is deposits. Everyone was expecting deposits to move towards big banks, and that is not necessarily the case. Certainly for mid-sized banks, deposits have moved down, but net deposits have decreased for this business. Now, of course, there is a, a spending element, this revenge revenge spending from the pandemic, essentially. We're moving towards summer. People are more likely to go on holidays in spring and summer than they are in the winter. So this is completely, I can see this trend continuing, a slight decline year over year. This is still an increase, but quarter over quarter, that's been a significant decline. Not the end of the world by any means. They're still getting a lot of inflow from mid-sized banks where the panic was really felt. And this just really demonstrates for me that the baby was kind of throughout with the bathwater. In terms of in terms of checking accounts or consumer banking, so non-checking and checking accounts, not really that much change. That's been a steady decline from, from Q2 2022. But nothing really that makes turns me off from this business whatsoever it's clearly not being a run this bank that'd be absolutely ridiculous bank of america is one of if not the most crucial financial institution to consumers in the u.s 
So there is definitely not a run on this bank. It seems like it's safe as houses from a deposit point of view, in my opinion. And there's a reason why consumers are trusting the deposits in Bank of America. It's arguably the strongest consumer bank in the world. Number one in estimated US retail deposits. Number one in online and mobile banking. Number one small business lender. Voted the best bank in the US most often. Best consumer digital bank in the US. Its total revenue just continues to rise and rise in the consumer bank in seven. Even if it is down quarter over quarter because it's deposit loss. Year over year, really strong growth. Average deposits, slightly down year over year, as I mentioned, but nothing to be overly concerned about, in my opinion. The average loans and leases just continues to tick up. This is just a really strong, conservatively run business that is excelling. Now, I think it's important to highlight, while Bank of America obviously has an incredible balance sheet, it must be said that assets have declined year over year. But we're talking 3.2 trillion to just shy of 3.2 trillion. I'm not overly concerned, and relatively speaking, this is counting the pennies. The total loans and leases have increased, cash and cash covenants have increased. It's just that the total debt securities have decreased. Probably they're just trying to insulate themselves a little bit. Equities increased over time, so common shareholder equity has increased a nice amount year over year. Bulk value per common share right now, they are estimating, is $31.58. Right now, the stock is trading around $29. It is very, very rare that this stock trades at a discounted book value, obviously, because it's an excellent conservatively run business with an excellent owner operator. This is strange to me. And just as a final point, the most impressive segment for this business in terms of year over year increase was clearly the net interest income up $2.9 billion or 25% year over year. Slight decrease quarter over quarter, but there is some seasonality to this generally with bank stocks. Net interest yield continues to be really high at 2.85%. In terms of valuation, I don't really feel the need to get too much in the weeds here looking at DCFs and grain valuations and things like that. To me, it is very clear that this business is far undervalued on the metric that I like to value banks on, and that's price to book value. Currently, its price to book value is around 0.94. Its five year average, 1.16. You can see it's, ne it's never been cheaper on average if in the last five years, the cheapest it's been is 0.99, so essentially book value. It's now trading at a significant discount to book value, in my opinion, offering a potential earnings yield of around 11%. Price price earnings ratio of around 9. Its five year average is 12, 12.7. Price to cash flow of 38. This is not as important with banks, in my opinion, versus its five year average of 28. What I'm really focused on is the price to book value. And you were getting this at discountable value when it that very rarely ever happens, except in times of extreme crisis, like the recession, the Great Recession, for example. For me, this just is excellent value for an excellent business. It's very clear to me why Buffett loves this business. It's a conservatively run business with an excellent CEO in Brian Moynihan, who will be a real loss to the bank instead of when he eventually retires. It's looking quite cheap to me at the minute. 0.94 times book. Discounted book value doesn't happen very often. 3% dividend yield to wait around because this stock ne never really goes through massive changes. It's normally in the 25 to 40 range. Of course, Great Recession, things like that, withstanding, has generally increased over time. I can see its market cap significantly increasing from here. I think this is definitely a case of the baby being thrown out with a bathwater. 3% dividend yield, 26% payout ratio, trading below book value, and a price earnings is just 9 compared to the wider sector, which is around 12. I think this is a clear buy right now. I think it's if Buffett could, without regulatory concerns, add more to this business, I think he definitely would. And for me, I'm going to be taking a couple of nibbles at this business. I like it around this price. I want to be buying it all under book value. If it goes above book value, that's not the end of the world for me. Still probably dollar cost average over time. But while it's below book value, this seems like a screaming buy for me. Of course, that's just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research and due diligence. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you like this business at this price. Let me know if you prefer other banks like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. Whatever you prefer, let me know down in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. I'll see you next time.